your back muscles run the entire length of your spine from the base of your skull down to your bum and they play a vital role in maintaining good healthy posture and keeping your back healthy and strong if you've got lower back pain or sciatica you need to have effective mechanisms for building strength in these muscles without making the problem worse doing so the right way will really help you take charge of your back pain restore back resilience and health and ultimately become pain free again whether it was back pain specifically or sciatica to help you do this we put together this video of some great exercises you can do at home and in the gym with bands and with weights to help you effectively build back strength without compromising any injuries that you might have down there in the lower back overall these exercises should help you massively reduce the risk of injury or re-injury to that lower back and reduce the risk of any flare-ups in the future. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Michael Fatika, the lead osteopath and spine specialist here at Back in Shape. We help people around the UK and all over the world fix their back pain from home and get back in shape for the long term. And before we get into these exercises, a quick word on your posture and your core when doing these exercises. Whether you're doing the single arm variations or whether you're doing some of the later exercises we'll cover, you need to make sure that you're doing this with a great spine posture. And what that means is that you're nice and tall. Your core, that's the core set of muscles around your abdomen, is engaged and tight. And your posture is up and tall with your chest being elevated slightly. We call this a chest pop. And if you do this correctly, you'll have this nice baseline of tension through the erector spinae muscles, which is a, a sheet or string of muscles running from the base of the skull down to the lower back. And that's going to help hold your spine steady with your core, which wraps around the abdomen. And those two muscles or two groups of muscles are going to work to provide this scaffolding upon which the larger movers, such as the lat dorsi muscles, the trapezius muscle, and others are going to then move your arms in different ways or your torso like a drawbridge. Safest exercise to start with here is going to be a standing single arm row using a band or cable. And the reason we choose this is because you're in a very safe position. You're stood upright, your core is engaged, and you've got good posture, and we've got half the load pulling us forwards. So when we're doing this exercise, we have the one arm working at a time, working through that 10 reps, and then we can switch over to the other side. This allows us to really focus on the muscles that are doing in the work on the one side, rather than worrying about us being pulled and toppled forwards, which can be the case when you're getting to grips with these exercise in exercises in the first instance. If you're feeling confident with doing the single arm variation of this standing row, you can take the next step, which can be doing the double arm variation. And here we just have two handles and we're doing the row exercise again with that same good posture. And you could also do this in the seated position, but this is very safe because it doesn't involve us being in the bent over position where we have to work on other areas at the same time, potentially putting the back into a more compromised position. So once you've mastered the single arm exercise, take a step up to the double arm variation of this row exercise and push on from there. Now, depending on the space that you have and the setup you have and the degree of discomfort you are or are not in, both of those standing exercises can be done in the seated position, either using a dining table chair to set yourself up, or if you're in the gym using a cable system or bands, you can also use your bench to sit on. But you've got to make sure that when you're sat there, you are in good upright position. You've got strong posture and you're not allowing your lower back to be rounded forwards as you go through this exercise. So posture when you're doing this, like we said at the outset, is a vital, especially for those of you that have lower back pain or sciatica, you might actually find being sat in this rowing position is a little bit better for you because you feel a little bit more able to counteract the pull of the bands with your feet out in front of you. Whether it's single arm or double arm, sitting can be a good way to start this exercise too. The inevitable next step in the progression of these exercises is to move over to the bent over row position. And this involves us being, as the name suggests, in a bent over position. But we always suggest, instead of doing the traditional bent over row, whereby you are hip hinging at the hips and holding your body there, you instead opt for what's called a tripod row. And that's where we're really using that front arm, like you'll be able to see in the video in a moment, to support the weight. So you have equal weight going through your legs and that one arm that's doing the supporting. And this decreases the amount of involvement of the lower back or rather the amount of risk the lower back is under because you have that extra strut for support whilst you're doing the rowing exercise. This exercise allows us to start to not only use bands 
but use heavier dumbbells and kettlebells to build the strength in a way that's just not possible if we're doing those standard or seating variations that we mentioned a moment ago, because you'll get to a point with those where the weight that you have to use to challenge yourself is maybe getting close to or, a pro or, or near your own body weight. And that's gonna kind of pull you off balance too much. You spend more time worrying about how balanced you are than actually doing the rowing motion itself. So have a play around in this position. Make sure that you are, when in the tripod position, based through the feet and that supporting arm. Make sure that lower back is under less strain, but still keep the core and back muscles nice and tight to stabilize your spine, regardless of the fact that they're not as vulnerable as they could be in the exercises we'll get onto shortly. The inevitable last step here, before we get onto one extra bonus exercise that is essential, is going to be the barbell bent over row. And you can, of course, do this with dumbbells as well, but this puts us in the most challenging position where we're hinging at the hips and holding ourselves there, which requires a tremendous amount of static strength in that lumbar spine and core whilst we engage in that rowing motion. But ultimately, this is going to allow us to progress the weight and resistances that we're doing. For those of you that don't just wanna get on with daily life and you know, posturing around the house and doing more casual things and have that demand for maybe high level sport or a little bit more levels of activity and physicality that are required from your day job or from your extracurricular pursuits, this is going to be an inevitable part of your workout at some point sooner or later. Just take care, especially if you're recovering from a lower back injury. You want to make sure that you're at least doing your body weight on the bar in the next exercise before you start to get into barbell bent over rows. Because quite frankly, the tripod variations are much, much safer for your lower back and you're going to find them more than adequate to build a significant amount of strength over the short to medium term without needing to opt for the barbell row, uh, you know, and putting yourself in a little bit more vulnerability. This final exercise is vital, and really you should be doing this from the word go alongside all of the exercises that we've just mentioned. And that is going to be the hip hinge, which can progress into a more conventional style deadlift or Romanian deadlift or stiff leg deadlift, whatever you want to call it. But ultimately this is a hinging motion. Why is this really, really important? It is because you are solely bending at the hips and you are challenging your spinal musculature, the back muscles in their entirety to maintain spinal posture through the entirety of this hinging movement. Whether you've got the legs bending as well, as in the case of the deadlift variations, or you're just doing a pure hip hinge with the barbell, this is going to allow you to significantly increase the load that you're exposing your back to and thereby build the strength of not only the back muscles, but the spine's ability to bear load, the disc's ability to bear load in a safe and controlled environment. This can start at the very basic with just using a band and can scale all the way to using significant amounts of weight in the gym on a barbell to really build the strength of your lower back. And I would suggest that when you're doing this back strengthening protocol, if you will, or exercise in the gym, the most weight you should ever lift should always be on the hip hinge or the deadlift. That should always front run the other exercises that you're doing. For example, it's no good if you're maxing out doing a 60 kilo deadlift or hip hinge, and you're trying to do a barbell bent over row with 60 kilos as well. You're leaving yourself at a very vulnerable level. Either you're being inefficient with your hip hinges and deadlifts, and therefore you're leaving too much on the table, you should be doing more, or you're being overzealous and risky with your barbell over, uh, with your barbell bent over rows, putting yourself at unnecessary risk of an injury. And ultimately, we work out in the gym to get our body functional for daily life and all the other things we want to do. It's no good injuring ourselves in the process with unwise training decisions. Now, of course, if you're lucky enough to go to a well-equipped gym, then you've got tons of other back machines that you can use which replicate either the pulling down motion or the rowing in motion. And these are great machines that can allow you to continue to build the strength and resilience in your back musculature. I will say with the machines, you're going to have less of a stabilization role, but at the end of the day, as you do add the weight that you're using on these exercises, inevitably you're gonna have some stabilizing role from that core and from those back muscles as well. Now it's all well and good knowing what exercises to do, but we should be doing them in the right way. And what we generally recommend as a good strategy for the average person who's getting into this, trying to strengthen up their back, maybe because they have had back injury or sciatica in the past, or they want to prevent one in the future, start out with doing five sets of 10 reps. And what you're looking for is on set one and maybe set two, the weight that you're using should be comfortable and manageable. You should feel like you've got plenty more in the tank by the end of the 10 reps. But as you get 
to set three and set two, you're going to find certainly on rep three, set three, that it's starting to get a little bit difficult. By the time you get to set four and certainly set five, you might be needing to maybe pause for a moment or maybe only have just one or two reps left in the tank at the end. And remember, as you first move up to a new weight, you're going to find that peak to be more true. And over the course of three to four weeks, you'll find that fourth and fifth set become relatively more manageable. And that's kind of your indication to start increasing the weights again. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to try and keep your rest around about that 30 seconds to 60 seconds between sets, or at the very least, keep it consistent across sessions over time. That helps you with that consistency, understand whether you're getting objective improvement. Because some strategies, which we won't cover in this video in detail, can include trying to add in extra sets, for example, or extra weight and giving yourself that extra bit of time to recover. Because if you give yourself a little bit more time between say set four and set five, you'll find you can get out an extra rep or two, which can make the difference between hitting the 10 and not quite making it. Ultimately, the first rowing exercises that we mentioned in this video, the bands with the weights, with the barbell, will really help you build the musculature in your torso and in your lower back. And combined with a good hip hinging movement by way of a pure hip hinge or the deadlift variations, you're going to really build a strong, what's called posterior chain, which is the chain of musculature that runs from the base of your skull all the way down to your heels and arguably the soles of your feet. And that is pivotal in maintaining good back health and reducing the risk of back injury for the long term. But it doesn't stop once you leave the gym. You've got to be more conscientious about how you use your body on a daily basis. So it's no good being textbook perfect in the gym and then letting all that good posture and engagement and movement patterns go out of the window when you're at home and around the place with your family. Commit to taking the great form that you're using in the gym back home with you. And that way you'll find that those good habits developed in the gym are refined and ingrained into you at home as well. And this makes for a tremendously more favorable set of odds if you are unfortunate enough to become injured in the lower back in the future. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you do have any questions, please do use that comment section down below. We read and reply to all of your comments. This one's a little bit more just about the exercises. So if you've got any specific back pain or you need help with yours, then do check out the link down in the description to the Fixing Back Pain Masterclass, a full masterclass where we break down absolutely everything over 80 minutes or so to really help you recover from lower back pain for the long term. And some of these exercises will feature along the way. If you've made it this far, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.